For the conclusion of Season 3 of Knock On, I'm going to give you an absolute beast buffet from several of the Knock On crew members. And I want to end by saying thank you to everyone out there and their continued support to Knock On and everything that we represent. I truly love archery and I know that by sticking together, we can continue to make this sport get even better. Hunter. Select UA package. Select point. Select transport. Select accuracy package. Select Nikon optics. On this first hunt, let's join knock-on crew member Jamie Hackett as he earns a hard-fought buck in their home state of South Dakota. Him and his brother put in a ton of time this year, but like many of us in the Midwest, they struggled to see very many deer because of the impact that the EHD virus had on their deer herd. It's hard to believe. He came right through, 10 yards, courting away shot. We freaking smoked him, man. We smoked him awesome. Nice. Nice shot. Thanks, dude. Thanks. I'm sure that was him going down. Yeah, it had to been. crash. It had to been. Oh, so sweet. We're out of the tree. Put an arrow through that deer about 20 minutes ago. We're gonna go grab the arrow, see what we got at the end of this trail. We're thinking it's gonna be a fairly short one. Pretty sure we heard him go down. Let's see what we got. Hey dudes, what's up? Day 7, South Dakota Archery 2012. We've uh, had a pretty rough go. It's the first shooter we've had come by. Where we're hunting had that the EHD come through, killed an awful lot of deer, so things are real tough this year. This guy came through, gave us about a 10 yard quarter and away shot. As you can see, that Omer edge tore him up. He only went about uh, probably 75 yards, tipped over. Be sure to visit knockonarchery.com to see our entire line of knock-on lifestyle clothing as well as some awesome knock-on gear and accessories that I personally take to the field myself. Enter promo code SHOWFAN and I'll include a free signed photo. Also remember that all U.S. orders over 100 get free shipping. Knockonarchery.com a big part of what makes Knock On so special is when families come together and hunt together. And that's what I like so much about these Hackett brothers is they've hunted together, they're best friends, and here's another great hunt when these brothers switch bots for Justin to get his antelope in his home state of South Dakota.
We're in uh, South Dakota, guaranteed antelope tag, out here with uh, dakotahuntingtrips.com. Chris Peterson put us on some awesome goats, private ranch. Uh, we had uh, first day six, six people in camp got goats. Uh, we took this guy on the second morning, about 45 minutes in the stand. Awesome goat, 45 yard shot. Uh, put it right through the boiler maker. He went in about 80 yards, piled up. Now let's join my hometown buddy, Pete Clendenin, on an awesome whitetail hunt that he had here in our home state of Iowa with his good buddy, Waylon. Cameraman Waylon shot one two weeks ago. Same spot, same side of the tree. Wow! <laughs> it's unbelievable. Again, same spot. This number one stand is incredible. It just the deer funnel through here. We've been we've been struggling this this last two weeks. The deer just haven't been chasing. And today it happened. You know, persistence in the stand. We've been been doing it. Knock and roll, baby. Knock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, did you see? <sighs> That's incredible. Well, it finally happened this morning. Uh, had a nice one walk through. Got a good shot on him. He uh, didn't go too far. Um, we had uh, been having a slow season this year. I was just happy to have something like this walk through. You know, it's getting close to Thanksgiving. We've been hunting hard. We went into the number one stand, and uh, this is what came of it right here. Couldn't be happier about it. Dead Center. On this Dead Center segment, I want to talk with you about a cool little thing that is a great reference tool and can definitely help your left and right errors. And that's the Retina Lock, which is available on the Lethal Weapon by Sherlock, as well as the IQ brand bow sights. Those two sight companies have this little invention called the retina lock. And what that is, is when you look through this, it's a green circle. And when you set it correctly by adjusting two of the screws, your first time setting it up, you get a black dot that you move to the center of that green circle. And what that does is when you pull back and anchor and look through your peep at your scope, you're gonna notice that that black dot, if you have your hand in a perfect position, will be center in the green. If you have any type of bow torque left or right, then that black dot is not gonna be in the center of the green. And it instantly gives you a reference of whether or not you're shooting with a torque-free grip. It makes a big difference on field points but even more of a difference if you're shooting a fixed blade broadhead. So I'm just gonna give you a quick look at what twisting your hand can do to where your arrow impacts. I've got two arrows down there, right dead in the center, and on this one, I'm just gonna look through my retina lock and give it a slight twist on purpose just to show you what a little bit of bow torque can do to where your arrow goes. As you can see, if you twist your hand too much, your arrow is definitely gonna veer off target. If you're looking for a new sight, check out the Lethal Weapon by Sherlock or also that IQ brand bow sight. If you're looking to learn more about archery, be sure to tune in to Knock On Podcasts. Knock On Podcasts is a weekly talk show where I get in-depth with shooting techniques, equipment setup, and also give you a no BS review on some of the latest industry gear. Knock On Podcasts are great for listening on a road trip or that dreaded ride into work. Expand your archery knowledge with the highest level of world-class information on the airwaves. Knock On Podcasts.
I'm out here. It's the middle of the day, two o'clock. Been here since 5.30 in the morning. It's fall and a big old group of turkeys came by. That was a nice jake right there for my last uh, fall turkey tag. And uh, my first kill with that brand new Hoyt Spider. I'm pretty pumped about that. I love having a fall turkey tag because it makes these long days go that much better. Nice little turkey for lunch. I had a coyote come through today, did a little predator control. It's uh, kind of exciting to get to shoot a coyote every once in a while. Um, just glad he came through and got the opportunity to shoot at him. Now let's travel around the world to knock on Australia to hunt with knock on crew member Adam Greentree for a truly world class Australian water buffalo. Well, finally, all come together after a, a lot of looking and searching, looking over a lot of uh, good buffalo. I've come across uh, the granddaddy of buffalo. He's an absolute ripper, and, and I'm stoked. He's massive, he's just a huge, huge bull. On this hunt, we're in Oklahoma for an awesome whitetail hunt that I had. And what made this hunt so special was that I'd actually spotted this buck the day before and got to admire him, but he was outside of range. And like many of you whitetail hunters know, you hardly ever get a second chance. But luckily for me, the next morning at first light, this buck did come through the area again and presented me with an awesome shot. But just to make that morning even more special was that I had a doe come in just a few minutes after to complete the Oklahoma double. Dang, man, he's just too far. Wait. Wow. Okay. Meh. <laughs> There. Nice shot. Luckily for me, before we had packed up, we had this doe come in so that I could get my second tag filled. Perfect. Right behind that shoulder. So we got the front shoulder, we got the rest. He's bled out nice and good. 
let's uh got one down so let's go check out my buff oh yeah check that out oh sweet look at this yeah baby i love it when they just start growing all kinds of wacky stuff on you he was short on his main beams but that's because he likes growing all the the junky stuff what do you think of that oklahoma down here at that point real good right That's there neat. check that out a little side smacker side smacker rear kicker awesome buck dude that was sweet well worth the wait carbon matrix plus i'm so pumped right now i can't believe it's rut man it's a year later it's rut it's got a big old tongue hanging out for everyone to see when you hit them in the right spot, they definitely uh, get a little bloody for you. So stay with us. Um, here in Iowa, we were actually in a hundred year drought, over 40 inches under what we should have had for rainfall. We were so dry. There was a huge outbreak of blue tongue in our area because there just wasn't that fresh water and there was very little water. So what I did was I went ahead and went out and bought a whole bunch of these rubber tanks and I buried these in key areas on my place. and you know use the rhino and a big 100 gallon tank that i bought at farm and fleet and brought water in here non-stop and i was really hoping to shoot a giant buck over one of these water sources for you early season but we actually got blessed and got some rainfall but i'm going to show you one more thing that makes this really cool and that's this is something that i learned in africa a lot of times when deer come to a water source, especially when they think that you're probably in some type of an area where, you know, where a predator has an opportunity at them, a lot of times they like to, to face that potential threat. And in this case, we actually have a bale blind over here, which I'll show you in a minute. So what I want to do is I actually want these deer to have to channel around this water tank so that when they go ahead and get their drink, they're giving me a quartering away or at least a broadside shot. So what I did was I went down and cut down a whole bunch of nasty locust limbs and I pile them around the back of that water source so that they don't come at it from this way to drink. They actually come around it so that they do give you that shot. And I have had several deer come to this water source, just not the buck that I wanted. But just to give you an idea of this setup, you know, this is the bale blind right here that we have taken a lot of animals in, a lot of turkeys, a lot of deer, and uh, you know now that we've implemented that water source, if it would have stayed dry, I would have guaranteed you that we could have got a great buck right over that 50 gallon water tank. So again, find out which one of those three things that your property that you're hunting might be missing and do whatever you can to get that in there and your deer are going to have all the essentials that they need and you're going to be able to contain your deer and hopefully grow bigger mature bucks i couldn't think of a better way to end things than on this incredible hunt that i had with my good buddy gudgel and this is a hunt that we call the tom bomb Right here, man, Oklahoma. Hour and a half. Just goes to show you never give up. Man. Just found a nice spot. We found some roosting trees and just late night hunt. They weren't caught. They're not calling. So we got between where we saw birds this afternoon 
and the biggest trees on this whole creek bed and just took a chance at them roosting here and sure enough got them coming in he's seen our setup stopped to gobble at it and that was the wrong move because there's an eastern tracer knock with his name written all over it Oh my god. <laughs>